Thank you for listening to my Postdoc Transformation Show. Maybe you now want to leave out of science and start your own side business as a runway for your better future? Then you will benefit from my free business preparation quiz as linked in the show notes. If you want to organize your marketing and selling efforts, please also subscribe to my new video podcast show, Creating Reorganized. I share my tricks from creating this show, speak with business owners who run a podcast for their business, and learn from podcasting service providers about their tools boosting our businesses. My new video podcast show, Creating Reorganized, will also be a living example of applied industrial and occupational psychology for my students in real life. And now, let's get to this episode. Postdoc Transformation Postdoc Transformation Postdoc Transformation. Invest in your postdoc transformation. Welcome to the seasonal show for scientists leaping into business. In every sponsored episode, we are happy to recommend employers of choice for you. Make sure to check your readiness to leave out of science with us for free as linked in the show notes. For your career transition, we offer customized career transition e-courses and memberships also at graduate schools all over the world. Maybe yours too. And if your university isn't yet our customer, enroll in your free email course for career transition made simple as linked in the show notes. I'm your host, Professor Dr. Eleanor Sui Winkles, with my team who is rooting for you. And let's build your postdoc transformation with this episode. Welcome, Postdoc Transformers. I'm so excited to have you here in this episode with Dr. Luna Munoz because I have been stalking her to get her on my show from the get-go when I started my interviews. And now, finally, it's now time to have her on my show because really it's about the values I shared in my show. And you'll be hearing her and instantly see why or know why we are on the same just to give you a quick rundown on Dr. Lunia Munoz, she is doing career coaching and training workshops at universities. She's also an academic coach, but also works as an executive coach. She's doing some knowledge exchange within South America for her work on gender-based violence prevention, and her passion is creating a compelling story for people on their resumes, on their CVs, but also within their grant application. And she works for social enterprises and community serving startups and organizations, whether it's in Spanish or in English. She's facilitating workshops to improve well being, prevention of burnout for parents, but also preventing violence within young people, helping them to manage their big emotions during their adolescence. She's also a fellow podcaster. You can listen to her academic misfit podcast on every major podcast player. Right. So without further ado, welcome Dr. Luna Munoz. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Ali. It's so good to be here. I would love to have you share your journey from academia to career coach for PhDs. Why do you do that? Who do you support? My parents were born in Puerto Rico and I grew up in the U.S. in Puerto Rico. So I'm bilingual. And when when I was in New York, where I ended up, because we kept moving around every four years or so, I decided to go to university. My mom hadn't finished university. My dad had never finished high school. It was really important for me to you know get my education. Yeah, I have a letter from my dad that says, I love you as much as you love school. <laughs> so I love being in school. So I went to more school. I went to university. Me and my mother graduated from the same university at the same time with our bachelor's degrees. She had a very different life after that, having grown up in poverty. And I knew I wanted to do something bigger. I loved psychology and everybody was telling me, you can't do anything with psychology unless you have a PhD. I know, I don't understand it. So I was like, okay, I have to get my PhD. So I my undergrad, when I got my master's degree, I told my mom and my grandparents, don't fly all the way here from Puerto Rico. I'm going to do more. There's going to be more to come. My grandparents came for my PhD graduation in New Orleans. And then I was going to go into industry, basically. So I got a job at an institute for juvenile justice services in New York. People kept saying, leaving academia, yes, you'll be doing research, but you'll be leaving the academic world. You won't be a professor. 
are you sure you want to leave that? Because you can never come back, which is just one of those myths, right? So I had gotten an offer from Sweden to do a postdoc. And how often do you get to go to Sweden? So I didn't have a passport. I didn't have anything. They arranged everything for me. They paid for my flight, my visa. The pay was really good because it was Sweden. I had a child there without paying for health care, which was a dream for, for me. When I had my child and responsibilities, I knew I had to go to work. I finished my postdoc, came to the UK and had been a lecturer, senior lecturer, which is the same as assistant professor and associate professor in the US. Uh, research, 60% teaching, and add on top of that, all the administration, there's like 150%, isn't there? So I kept moving around in the UK thinking like, maybe this is going to be better than the tenure system in the US, like the whole publisher parish thing, the getting big grants, all of that. But I kept getting pushed by people who were full professors and professors before they were like 40. And they were like, you need to strive even more, which hit all of my buttons of striving with my gold stars that I had in school. I was like, okay, I'm going to be the good girl, get my grants and I get a prize. I got a prize in parliament for my research. Then I published the paper from the prize and, you know, came with prize money, which then I used to go around the country and talk about my research. And so I thought, thought I was making it like all the good moves, but there started to come some issues with just feeling like there was a lack of fit. I wasn't feeling fulfilled because a lot of the things that I wanted to do weren't valued by academia. I wanted to collaborate with people where we were actually all equals and nobody was a PI. And that's kind of hard to do. I mean, we made it work, but I couldn't fit in. Hey, before we continue, we want to appreciate those who finance this valuable episode for you. I want to share with you my best marketing agent. Serving my underprivileged, underrepresented, and underserved audience, leads, and clients is key for me as an Asian working mom, business owner, and professor in Germany. But I can't be marketing and selling all the time, and I have to be mindful with my own resources. So I chose Podbean as my podcast hosting and monetizing provider. I'm on the Unlimited Plus plan, for our postdoc transformation show and creating reorganized show. With Podbean, your audience can inclusively listen and watch your podcast according to their visual and auditive needs. You can also embed your customized podcast player on your external website or use one of the beautiful website templates. You can easily share your podcast on all major podcasting directories, which allows you to reach a huge audience on their favorite devices in their countries. Podbean also has an ads marketplace, and you can easily attract and manage sponsors for dynamic ads, which are played out depending on your audience criteria. This way, you can serve your audience for free. Some of them become your clients eventually, but your advertising sponsors independently support you financially in each episode. See insightful stats per demographic and which episodes attracted most listeners so you can tailor your future episodes for your leads and clients and present suitable external ads. If you want to try Podbean for your own podcasting, DM or email me Podbean so I can share my experience and consult you. Please check it out via my link in the show notes. I only get a small financial reward if you become their customer using my Podbean link. After this quick appreciation of our sponsors, we are now back in our insightful episode. There was the amount of time I spent with my students and mentoring, especially students of color, students who are first generation, students who were working full-time while they were doing their degree, which was the same as my experience. I really wanted to mentor them and cultivate their passion for research. My doctoral trainee just got his paper published yesterday (laughs) after working with me like however many years ago that I left. And he's a clinical doctoral psychology, he's a psychologist. And he has an amazing Instagram. Those are the kinds of things that really lit me up. And so it was really difficult for me to fit in. And I then started doing coaching while I was in academia. Again, they said, if you do this coaching, you can then get promoted. There was always like, 
you do this, you'll get promoted. If you do this, you'll get promoted. If you, it was like, cross this line, you die. <laughs> you know, Looney Tunes cartoons. I got promoted to associate professor, but never happened to professor full chair. But I did coaching while I was there. I set up a peer mentoring program at Durham University. And then when I came to University of Liverpool, because I'd had all that coaching background, they put me on their coaching program that they had started in the Institute for Psychological Sciences. I started doing coaching there, training people on coaching, doing evaluations of all the coaching and writing reports on our coaching in, in academic circles. We did coaching for people who wanted to be PhD students, and then we started to broaden it out to more and more of our early career researchers. Then other institutes within our university started to take over. When I left academia, a lot of people were asking me, how did you set up this coaching in academia? We want it the same in our university. We think this is great. And then people started going, hey, I was on the wait list to be coached by you while you were at University of Liverpool, but now you're not there anymore because I quit. And I was like, maybe I should look into this, even though it wasn't using my PhD, um, <laughs> which is ridiculous because I have a PhD in psychology. A lot of people were like, you're leaving the research. And there was a bit of me that felt like leaving something where I got that prize for my research and I'm separating out those components of what really drives my purpose every day. The reason I was loving research was because I got to teach it to other people. I got to mentor, talk about the research in pubs, tell teachers from secondary schools and primary schools about my research, which was about families and children. And so they would take that information and use it in their schools. I worked with schools, you know, connecting with my why, the purpose. The reason why I was doing that research was to have an impact for science communication, for mentoring early the next generation of researchers. So I thought, how do I do that outside academia? And that's when I created my coaching business and consultancy, because I really want to help organizations have better ways of evaluating their services, because that's usually only for the big companies who have an R&D department. What I really want is for all these starting charities to do it right from the start and to understand what evaluation is so that they can better serve all of the community. Because in reality, a lot of the social services are being cut in terms of funding. So we need the community activism to rise up. So I'm also working as a consultant in addition to a coach, but they come from the same passion, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely made sense. And that vibe is really what connected you and me you could probably see by my reactions that I can absolutely see that you've been pouring into the system to make it better to serve the ones who really need it. But essentially, it was never helping you to promote yourself into the full professorship. I see why you were leaving and I can see why you want to do this service to social enterprises. But it was so underrepresented individuals. You've come from Puerto Rico establishing yourself as a family. You mentioned your mom in New York growing up and then also traveling around the world. You know what it means to be underrepresented. What unique challenges do you see today for early career scientists or individuals in social enterprises for Latinas, for the LGBTIQ plus community, especially when transitioning from academia to a corporate career? Yeah. I think a lot of the big challenges come from how education is sold as the American dream is through education. The way that education is structured is about if you get a higher degree, you start up at a higher ladder and you climb up from there. But we know lots of <laughs> white men that I'm thinking of right now that don't do that. They just get up the ladder by falling upward or failing upwards. I think this, this, that narrative about education is valuable. There's this idea about achievement and striving that never ends and you never feel good enough and you never feel worthy. I, I applied to 16 PhD programs and I got into one, which was Penn State University, which is not, at least back in the late 90s, was not very diverse. And actually a black professor had only been there four months and he left. And that was our only 
black professor in psychology. So when I got there, I realized I don't really feel like I fit in here. And I feel like I was one of those diversity hires basically for my PhD program, right? And so it made me feel like I'm not worthy because I'm just here because I'm supposed to tick a box and I have to work twice as hard, you know, and when I, I, I had failed one of my first um, uh, exams, I didn't know any of the statistics they were teaching us. And I just felt like, wow, I really don't belong here. But I had a tutor. I worked every day, like hours and hours on the statistics that then people were coming to me <laughs> about statistics and going, you're such a natural at it. Like, no, I freaking work my butt off so I could do it. Work harder than everybody else to be treated the same, right? In a lot of like ethnic minority um, or underrepresented groups, you're working twice as hard to get like the same treatment. And so I think that really wears on you and that kind of burnout as well. So I think some of the things that I see when people are leaving academia who come from backgrounds that are first generation or they're up underrepresented are this innate worthiness, like I'm not worthy of whatever, whether it's financial or it's I don't deserve this, but there's something about that. Let's pause for a moment to respect those who sponsor this valuable episode. I want to share with you my time and energy saver. As a professor for industrial and occupational psychology, I also teach about the future of work. And as a former IT strategy consultant, of course I embrace AI to be a future-proof podcast producer of the Postdoc Transformation Show and the Creating Reorganized Show. Descript is the video and audio podcast editing tool of my choice. I pay for their creator plan, and it's worth every dollar. Descript comes with an integrated professional remote recording studio for the best audio quality for your guests. For example, I record an hour interview with a guest or a solo, and instead of painstakingly doing a rough cut and deleting all the ums and ahs and fuller words and rambling around, which I did for hours, I now click on Descript AI, editing for clarity, and my rough cut is done in seconds or a minute. For fine-tuning, I edit text instead of audio waves, and I just insert all my pre-recorded music, intro, ads, and outro, like this one, in a matter of minutes. I can then easily export closed captions, fine-tune AI-driven summaries, chapter markers, and titles, which I feed into my show notes and podcast host. Descript even suggests the best clips for social media, and the video editor automatically includes the synchronized speaker's cameras and audio captions. I can also include stock graphics or pre-recorded videos, and you can find all our short-form examples on our Instagram and TikTok at Postdoc Transformation. If you want to try out Descript for your own podcast editing, DM or email me Descript so I can share my experience and consult you. Please check it out on my link in the show notes. I only get a small financial reward if you become their customer using my Descript link. Thanking our advertisers for their financial support, we are happy to return to our inspiring episode. And then there's also something about struggle. In Puerto Rico, we do a lot of struggling because we usually have hurricanes and earthquakes, but then we also have colonialism because we're still owned by the U.S. Um, and we're not allowed to vote. I think having that struggle and a lot of people have that kind of like their family has struggled to get them into a good country or whatever it then makes you feel like i need to struggle in order to to do well or i don't deserve this if i haven't struggled that was a lot of the emotional labor that i had to do and i help a lot of people uh, manage those emotions but also the idea of i need another degree i need to go back to university and get a second phd because <laughs> you know, and obviously if you're going to be a lawyer or something like, I know somebody who was a, a neuroscientist and she left and became a lawyer. So obviously she needed to go back to university and do her law degree. But I think really querying, do I actually need another degree to do what I'm going to do next? Do I need a, an MBA, a master's in business administration, if I'm going to start a business? No, you don't. <laughs> you know, and I think our lived experience is also 
not validated and not valued in our higher education world, except when they want us to be the equality, diversity, inclusion lead, but it's really just our skin color or our name. It's not really our expertise and our experience. They don't really want to know about it and they don't really want to make a change. It's really about creating reports that give a certain, a little rosy glow <laughs> to the reports. So I think lived experience and valuing that and finding your strengths and your assets in that and that they are absolute gems is really important. So yeah, I would say that's the lived experience of your value as a person who's lived a certain kind of life, your worthiness and the idea about getting more degrees. I think those are like the big things, the big challenges that people from underrepresented groups most often have, but other people would probably relate or resonate with that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I can, I do resonate. I was lucky in the sense, I know I'm privileged. I have tenure, so it's, I understand that. But I always said that it, it was playing roulette mm -hmm. and I, it was also luck. So I saw others who deserved it as much as I did, who didn't get through. And that acknowledgement is important and to share the privilege as well. And that's why I do this post of transformation show to make them see that there are options, that you don't have to go through the struggle to deserve a better life. Whatever is there in academia, you can have manifold in business. Yeah. And it's good and bad in business as well, but there's also bad and the ugly in academia. So. Now, I would love to switch gears to your offerings. And you were mentioning having a business. You are offering also career coaching, but also other services to social enterprises. So Luna, can you please provide an overview of your services? How do you also meet the specific needs of individuals from diverse backgrounds, knowing them or relating to them? Yeah. Yeah. And when you were just talking, I was thinking about the diverse backgrounds. I'm also... I'm Latina. I'm a mother. I was a, a single mother. I have ADHD. I'm bisexual. There's a lot of different things. And I think a lot of people who come to me also are neurodiverse because it's so hard to start a business or to look for a new career when there are so many things. <laughs> and I think it's really, you get stuck. A lot of people are talking about that stuckness and one of my clients said she was a paralyzed overachiever, right? Because you get paralyzed by, I need to achieve something and I don't know where to go. A lot of the people that work with me are neurodiverse, are underrepresented in um, higher education and in the real world at the top levels. My passion is to really get people to think bigger than what they're maybe thinking right now. I call them big visionary people. One of first Facebook groups was called Reach for the Moon. It's now called The Great Academic Escape because I really wanted to like do the Great Escape poster, but put a, a, a university building as the part that he's escaping. <laughs> and then I put my face on it, <laughs> escaping from the ground. That Reach for the Moon is what I really want people to get in the mindset of, is that big visionary thinking. So my services are about that. I have Life After Academia, which is about learning all the rule books that we had, maybe that we were trying to fit into when we were in academia and really getting out of that and not trying to fit ourselves into a new box, but thinking bigger and widening the prospects that are in front of us. And then at some point, as we start to feel like we know who we are and what we need, it allows you to navigate those paths and start to go at each intersection or junction. No, that's not the right path for me. Or yes, I think that's the right path. Let me look beyond those trees. I love helping people through that. And that's what life after academia is. It's really about getting your confidence. You're seeing the value that you have, but also connecting with your values because a lot of it is steeped in our why or our purpose, but in a way that also fulfills us and allows us to just be. I feel like we're always thinking, what can I do? Like when people are applying for jobs, I need to be doing something. I haven't done anything. I'm not there yet. I haven't arrived. We are fine where we are. We do not have to arrive. We never arrive. <laughs> that is life. Just being and resting and being in our purpose is so important.
let's pause for a moment to respect those who sponsor this valuable episode. I want to share with you my number one lead generator, and you can start that even without a podcast. It's Typeform, and I use them to create free quizzes with open questions and multiple choice answers. I also predefine mandatory answers so I can qualify and score leads, collect their email addresses for later nurturing. I can brand my quizzes with my audio files, branch a given quiz based on the answers for the different target groups, maybe sharing specific podcast episodes or other information and automatically send them an email after submitting the quiz. I even include a calendar invite for those leads who qualify specifically. So now I can help everyone on the surface and on a deep level for free and divert my own valuable time only to my high ticket leads. I collect all the data automatically after my initial setup as I have also integrated it with my remaining tech stack. If you want to try out Typeform for your own lead generation and qualification, DM or email me Typeform so I can share my experience and consult you. Please check it out via my link in the show notes. Again, I only get a small financial reward if you become their customer using my Typeform link. Thanking our advertisers for their financial support, we are happy to return to our inspiring episode. So I help people to just release themselves from expectations and outcomes. And I think that's what you were saying, Ellie, about being able to manifest. Or once you release the fact that my joy is contingent on what external people think of me and what external validation I get, it's hard to find real joy and fulfillment when all of your fulfillment and your satisfaction with yourself is based on things that you can't control. They're not in your control. And it took me a long time. Obviously, I went through therapy and EMDR therapy is the best thing ever. If you deal with post-traumatic stress disorder stuff, I thought that was amazing. Hypnotherapy, all those kinds of things. But in terms of my coaching, I'm not a therapist. So I work with people in terms of their, their emotions, because that's my background, empathy, emotions, stress. Um, a lot of my work was on the psychophysiological effects of stress, especially with the cardiac and the autonomic nervous system. So I help a lot of people tap into somatic awareness, getting into the knowledge that your body has. And that's what a lot of our ancestors did. If I think back to what my dad did and what my grandparents did, it was a lot of like bodily awareness work. And so it's tapping into that because we're told to ignore that in academia, right? You don't eat at lunchtime. You don't drink enough. You don't go to the bathroom because you forgot. We ignore so much of our body. And even in school, we're told to ignore them because you have to go to the bathroom at designated times, right? Eat at designated times. What? You didn't have that in Europe? Definitely in the U.S. and the U.K. Yeah, you're not allowed to go to the bathroom unless it's between classes. Um, or you raise your hand and you're allowed to, but some teachers might not allow you to. So yeah, it's getting back into the body. And a lot of the work that I do is on reflection and values and also accepting self-compassion, like radical self-compassion, which is about understanding that you have some responsibility for where you are now, but not the culpability that there is a, I forget what doctor said this, but the whole idea of me, we, and the world, like there's me, there's, I have some responsibility. We have some responsibility, the people closest to me and my context, and then the whole world, the environment that I live in has some responsibility because we are treated different ways, depending on what the world finds acceptable. Knowing all those things is really important. So I combine all of those in addition to how do I write my CV to resume? How do I build a business plan? But you need to do that self-reflection for because it's like preparing for a marathon, right? You don't just go straight through to the marathon. There's a lot of mindset work in marathon running. <laughs> There's a lot of emotions that are going to come up while you're running. I can't tell you how many things I divulged to people while I was running with them. I don't know why your mouth just talks, but all of that is really important in order to prepare for the writing the business plan, 
creating your business. Otherwise, what ends up happening is if you don't have trust in yourself or you don't feel worthy, you get connected to all these social media. How many likes does this have? How many people have uh, rejected my services? Oh, maybe I should say yes to this client, even though it's not aligned because I'm going to need that money. I don't think there'll be another client. I'm not worthy of another client. It's all those things. That's the part that I felt I needed to deal with in order to not get burnt out in my first year of my business. And I'm now in my third year of my business and my mindset is just at a whole different level. And it was that coaching experiences that I've had throughout the years. And then also the therapy, which was about like dealing with my self-worth in addition to the post-traumatic stress that I was bringing from probably just the whole life. (laughs) So that's part of it. Probably went too far into that, but I also have other programs that are membership programs for people who want just like a light touch and who are building a business, but want to do a lot of it themselves with a community on Slack um, or WhatsApp. Um, And then I have my consultancy. So I have social enterprises that either pay me monthly or for a project. And we build on their expertise, making connections. Again, it's the same kind of thing for coaching. I'm helping them to build networks, realize their biggest strengths and what they're serving in terms of their community so that they see the value of the work that they're doing and they're able to then articulate it into grant applications and other. So it's very similar to the coaching one because you're also then seeing your strengths and articulating them for your resume and in job interviews or to clients and really talking about what you do. I'm so interested in storytelling. I've always been someone to write fiction and nonfiction and poetry. And I love helping people with their message. We talk about it in terms of marketing, but I love talking about how do you introduce yourself to a client? How do you introduce yourself to a hiring manager when they ask you, tell us a little bit about you? I love creating those stories with people because I think there is something that will connect you to a job or a client if you can get a magnetic way of speaking your message and your story. So I absolutely love that. And it's something that I'm working with a couple of clients on right now. And I just, I think there's something to that. I always thought that when I moved to LA and I worked in Hollywood, I'm like a director, but with my PhD. (laughs) (laughs) my research projects are like director. I use virtual reality in some of my research. And I was always like, what's the next tech that I can use? A lot of the programs that I have are finding people's passions and then articulating them. Let's pause to respect those who sponsor this valuable episode. If you want a relatively passive income, Creating a paid e-course as your service is a great option, especially if you are like me, an experienced teacher in higher education, and now want to share even more knowledge and maybe also create a paid membership with live group meetings beyond the e-course, offering an e-course is a no-brainer. Thinkific is an AI-infused learning management system, which is a dream for every educator. After setting up an e-course or membership, You also need to market and sell your e-course. And that's when lead generation with Typeform and podcasting with Descript and Podbean can complement you well. If you want to try out Thinkific for creating your own e-course and membership, DM or email me Thinkific so I can share my experience and consult you. Please check it out via my link in the show notes. I only get a small financial reward if you become their customer using my Thinkific link. Thanking our advertisers for their financial support, we are happy to return to our inspiring episode. That was a great overview. It was showing us and also the potential client of yours, your wide experience, a wide array of experience using tech, but also your expertise and also your somatic expertise. It's actually really interesting to see how you are able to create your business model according to your own strengths. Now that you've been talking about clients, 
Can you unveil a success story of a client who you guided successfully from academia to a fulfilling career or even a business? Mm. How do you measure success for your clients? When do you think it is successful or is it a contingent thing? It's a never ending story and it's continuously evolving. So what can you share here? Yeah, I think, yeah, I love that idea about it's always evolving. I feel like we're always evolving. Yeah, I think when I first started out, I was thinking about getting people to a job, right? Like a career coach should. And my clients actually listening to them and doing feedback sessions with them and getting their critiques on my coaching and their critical feedback was really useful because some people said to me, Luna, it wasn't about like making more money or having like this kind of job outside of academia. It was really about seeing my potential and seeing how much I could do and then finding my balance after leaving academia and that work-life balance that just never really seemed to happen and that you were always striving for in academia. Luna, you gave me like a new outlook on life. At first I thought I should be tracking how much money my clients are making after they leave academia, but that's not who my clients are. Obviously there are people who hire coaches for that. I think in terms of my success stories, for example, was one of my first clients on um, a full one-to-one coaching. So we did six sessions of coaching every two weeks. And she had called me and said, I'd really love to do coaching, but I'm leaving my professor job and by, um, in biology. And I, I think I need to do an e-commerce course. And I was like, have an idea about whether you need to do this course or whether you need another certificate. You already have some of these skills. Let's have a think about it. And she was like, yeah, I think we'll do this first and then I'll come back to you if I need help. So that was over the summer. And then July or something like that, she was like, I've quit the e-commerce course and I want to work with you. I was like, okay. (laughs) So we started to work together and she was really thinking, yeah, I do have a lot of skills. So we identified all of her skills did a whole audit of her skills, but also translated them for a new market. So I asked her everything she's ever done. How did she support her students? What were the qualities, like soft skills that she brought in doing that? Turns out she already had a very small side business. Started to ask her about that. She just lit up, you know, about her business. And I was like, wait, what if you put all your energy into that? Oh, but it hasn't really taken off. Right, but you won't be working full time at the same time as running the side business when it has your full attention. Just give it a try. Let's experiment like we would in a lab. And she experimented and within a few months, so before she'd even quit her job and before she finished coaching, she came to me and said, I'm making more money doing that. And I'm actually like loving every part of it. And I'm seeing how I'm using my PhD and all these strengths that I didn't even know in my business. We articulated what all those strengths were. I had her write like her own badass resume. She didn't need a resume because she's building her business, but build the resume that you would freaking want to see for yourself. And it was just amazing about all of the things that she's accomplished for no one to see but herself, you know, but it was like a power statement. It was incredible. And I think that is the success. It's the empowerment. I love running empowerment workshops, but I don't call them that. It's really about just seeing your strengths and really being able to articulate them in the way it resonates with you rather than going, oh, that's the way a job description writes it, or that's the way this person writes. Let's write your own story about what your strengths are and say them in the way that's, I don't know, authentic. I know a lot of people are talking about that, but it is authentic and really a positive belief about yourself. I love when people think I can do this. You know what I mean? And when I hear people say, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. That self-efficacy is so powerful. I think that's where people talk about manifestation. It's really self-efficacy, but I'm talking as a psychologist. So those are the successes. So it wasn't just about how much money, but the fact that she could have freedom, the fact that she was saying she has more time for family, The fact that she was saying, I want to give these skills that you just taught me, Luna, to my child, because I don't want him to think that he has to do things in a certain way because other people and society or education says you have to do it in this linear way. I want him to know to follow his values. And I checked up on her eight months later after we had finished and she was like, Luna, I'm 
such in a good place. And I use the values that you taught me every day to make decisions. I am not being dramatic. It's actually true. Remember, you are a postdoc transformer. You are highly intelligent, well-educated, a bachelor, master, and maybe you have already your doctor under your belt, or you are a postdoc. You are internationally experienced, fluent in English, a leader and expert in your prior research field. You're resilient, brilliant in adaptation and problem solving. You are eager to bring in the transferable and monetizable skills needed in many companies to embrace the future and to become or remain an innovator in their markets. Hey, are you curious to ask professors, principal investigators, visiting scientists, postdocs, PhD students, and candidates some in-depth life and career guiding questions? But if it's cringe, so you end up not asking? Buy our postdoc transformation card game to have more fun and valuable insights in your journal club, lab, and mentoring meetings, lab rotations, during conferences, panels, and breaks at the Mensa. You'll get 10 intriguing mentoring questions per career level. So 10 for PhD students, 10 for postdocs, 10 for professors, 10 for parental scientists, underprivileged and underrepresented and underserved scientists. Check them out with our discount coupon on the Postdoc Transformation shop linked on postdoctransformation.com. values is the way I make all of my decisions. And I think that's, that's incredible as well, because I think there is something about connecting to your values. I use a lot of the training that I had in terms of values that I learned on thriving adolescence work. So I had done a lot of training on thriving adolescence. And I think there is something to a second adolescent when we're in our mid forties to fifties, you know what, let's go back to being like teenagers and having that kind of questioning, questioning of the rules and positive risk-taking because otherwise we stay in that paralyzed achiever. If we're not in that, let's take a risk here. Let's do it in a positive way, in a way that we're being responsible to ourselves. Let's take a little bit of a risk. It sounds funny, but that kind of risk-taking, that kind of joy for life and finding hobbies. Another woman had said to me, I've started doing football again, soccer for Americans. When I hadn't done it since I was a teenager and I'm making all these new friends and now I've started hiking and she gave me hiking clubs to contact as well. So it's that kind of joy for life, I think is, I don't know how to measure that exactly, but that quality of life, that's a good measure. Absolutely. And I had prepared so many questions, but I would just skip them because essentially you were able to share a real example in how you are able to connect a person just as an example, but a real person to see how her unique experience that she had gathered through all her lecturing, but also her sleeping beauty business, so to speak, how she could leverage that into a full business then. So that really speaks to so many questions that I would have asked you. But instead, I'm also, I just want to express my gratitude because I'm a psychologist as well. So what you said about Bandura's self-efficacy, this is the moment that I want my bachelor and master students to listen and to see that what we talk about in lectures is really important. I'm stressing it anyway. At the end of the day, it is relevant for your life and you measure success not by key performance indicators and money. The thing that you said about coming out of age or adolescence, you mentioned that before as being the good girl and trying to accommodate whatever external expectation was put forward to you. But the thing is that if we have been only socialized in academia and we never know what is also possible outside and we don't have a navigation system in the sense of what is good and what is bad, then we believe in that and believe it can lead to good things, but mostly also the bad things, right? So having the option to understand what is possible for you and what is possible for me, and that might differ because we have different privileges, right? Systems, right? We might be same in the same boat, but the sea is different for you and me. 
depending on the wave, whether you are there or not. And maybe I don't even have the same boat like you. Maybe I'm a good swimmer. So all the different obstacles that we can face, we also have to acknowledge that and to make the best out of that. There's no use of waning and saying, I could have done this. You have to make the best out of it. Let's pause for a moment to respect those who sponsor this valuable episode. Have you found this episode so far helpful for yourself? Well, maybe you can subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Popping, or wherever you get our show. And also share this episode with your PhD bestie because that would encourage us to help the underprivileged, underrepresented, and underserved early career scientists leaping into business. This would also ensure that you don't miss a future episode. Also, our subscription and listening numbers are key for finding the right sponsors for our show so that we can help you for free. So far, you have learned all my favorite marketing and sales tools. Now, how can you bring all the data from your audience, leads, and clients together so you can serve them on a value ladder and for the long term? Even after multiple touch points with you, you want to remain on their mind for when they are ready to buy your service or product. I am expanding my digital business. And I use Active Campaign as the centerpiece for all my services like email course, podcast, newsletter, show notes, websites, sales page, merch shop, forms, whatever it is as needed. As a former IT strategy consultant, I have high requirements on my tech stack. And Active Campaign offers so many integrations to all my other apps. I really use it daily. If you want to create your own digital business with various AI-driven lead magnets and funnel options, DM or email me, Active Campaign, so I can share my experience and consult you. Please check it out via my link in the show notes. I only get a small financial reward if you become their customer using my Active Campaign link. Thanking our advertisers for their financial support, we are happy to return to our inspiring episode. And I think that you do help them, your clients, with that. And how can my audience reach out to you? How can they connect with you if they want to learn more about your work and what you can do? Yeah, that? so I'm also on TikTok. I should go back on there. But I'm Luna Moon Reacher on TikTok. And then I'm Luna C. Munoz or Luna Clara Munoz on various social medias. I have a Facebook group and a LinkedIn group called The Great Academic Escape. And then I have lunaleadership.com. So it's L-U-N-A-L-E-A-D-E-R-S-H-I-P.com. So people can go there to see the various services that I offer. You can listen to my BBC interview about defiance, <laughs> which I love because, yeah, I, I feel like I am, I'm, I'm embodying defiance now outside of academia. So yeah, you can connect with me on there. And I'm also dancing. So you've probably seen me dancing on TikTok and things like that. I love music. I used to work for Warner Brother Records. I used to work for Tower Records. So music has been a huge influence in my life. So also, if you go to my website, you can listen to a Quit Your Job playlist on YouTube. I have lots of free resources on YouTube that are not just music playlists, <laughs> but are master classes and workshops that I've given. There's one on starting your own consultancy business and finding your strengths and starting out. So I hope to do more master classes. I'm trying to do one a month, one on Facebook, one on LinkedIn, alternating. So if you do have any ideas about next topics that I should cover, I'd love to your listeners to contact me and let me know what things I should cover next. Send me a DM on LinkedIn or Facebook. And yeah, I love taking recommendations for what I should cover in a masterclass. One of the, my favorite masterclasses was for Halloween and I just made it like with all spider webs. There is a spider web of academia that some people are trying to escape. So <laughs> I, might, I might use more spider webs actually, because <laughs> I really had fun with the Halloween. I think it was my goth girl phase coming out on that one. <laughs> But yeah, connect up with me on all the channels. Oh, wow, Luna, that really sounds interesting. And I really would love my, I mean, I would really love my audience, the post of Transformers to follow your lead and to sign up for the services because I really do think even though 
the UNI offer similar services, I really do think that the client needs to be served well. And if a potential client can relate more with you and benefit more from you, then I'd be more than happy to show them an alternative and maybe it's you. So is there any coupon that you can share for our postdoc transformers so that they have a perk for them? Yes. So the coupon code is postdoc transformation. Okay. So just for my listeners so that you don't have to scramble, I repeat that again, use postdoc transformation when you're at the checkout for any of the services that Luna is offering, and then you will get a perk and you will find everything all on her website. To wrap up, Luna, is there anything that you want to share with my audience now before we close? Yeah. Before thinking about investing in uh, coaching, I think it's good to get a, a view of what this person's like, right? So I think a big way to do that is to go to my website, go to resources, and you'll be able to download some things right away. So the skills workbook is something that people said was really helpful. You don't have to have any emails after you sign up because you can just say, I don't want to receive any emails and that's totally fine. You get the workbook and then you go off on your way. I have a CV to resume template workbook on there as well. So you can download that. And there's a free course, which is time to plan your exit. And it's just about owning your own time. So if you want to get rid of all those time management things that you see out there and want a different way with your values, get the own your own time, the time to plan your exit is a good resource as well. And that way you can just get in a, a sense of who I am as well. That's perfect. Thank you. And Luna, what I really want to say is that all that you have just mentioned, I will also put down in the show notes, also the discount coupons so that everyone who wants to follow up with you will find yes. you. And again, thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure to talk with you because really this is also an episode for my real life students, right? So that they know some of them want to become a coach. And I always tell them that you don't have to do a PhD to be a coach. You don't even have to do a master because really you need to have real life experience and business experience to help also your clients. And it's not just theory, it is really connecting with whatever you have. Do you want a transcript of our episode? And our episode sponsors answers to all six bold questions so that you can choose to apply. Do you want to nominate your potential employer of choice so that we can ask them our bold questions? For all of that, click on our links in our show notes and on our website, www postdoctransformation.com. Remember to check your readiness to leap out of science and to enroll in our free email course, Career Transition Made Simple. Thanks for your attention. I'm Professor Dr. Elna Zoe Winkers, the host of your seasonal postdoc transformation show. And once you have determined your readiness to leap and want to transition into business or industries, then you can enroll in your free email course with 10 actionable bingeable email lessons until you start your job in business. You'll get 10 emails like this. Number one, how to leap out of science. Number two, how to build your sustainable LinkedIn profile. Number three, how to read social media and network. Number four, how to research your favorite jobs and employers. Number five, how to do informational interviews to get insights. Number six, how to create your customized applications with ChatGPT. Number seven, how to prepare your thesis from a business point of view. Number eight, how to apply to your favorite employers. Number nine, how to choose the right job offer. Number 10, how to prepare for your new job. And did you know that we offer deep dive e-course workshops and memberships at graduate schools, maybe also at yours in the future? Ask your graduate school coordinator whether they want to book my services so that I can deliver them to you 24-7, 365 on your mobile device. And even better. If you get us paid by your grad school, we will pay you 50% recurrent sales commissions. So you will earn money with us as we help you and your PhD besties to transition into business. We can build a post of transformation together. Woohoo!
Postdoc Transformation.